student my name is confident welcome to our revision session of the grade 9 mathematics and I'm continuing to look at algebra and uh, I will say this is lesson uh, number three or part three as I said this question this is a, this is taken from a previous paper it was written in Gauteng province and these are end of year papers so what I thought of doing is to go through some sections and revise with you guys as you prepare for your final exams so the focus of this is algebra and you can see that algebra takes part from question three and in full it is question number four so let me see if ever the time allows for me to be able to cover uh, all these questions in question number three and question number four so if we go to question three which says that it is having some sections of algebra let us look at that and after that we go to question number four now if you look at question number three question 3.1 is on function is on patterns so i will look at that at another time and then but if you look at 3.2 now question 3.2 seems to be dealing in this case um with the section that I'm looking for it seems to be dealing with uh, as you can see it's dealing with algebra it says is the following statement correct show by calculation to prove your answer so you need to show by calculation so they need you to show by working but I just want to show you a quick thing that you can always use just to show whether it's correct or not so what you do is choose any value of x for example say let x be equal to 4 then you take the first part which is 2x uh, it's 2x minus 1 just to have an idea if this statement is correct or wrong is equal to 4x squared plus 1 so you substitute where there is x you put 4 so here we have got 2 bracket we said x is 4 minus 1 squared it must give me 4 bracket 4 squared plus 1 so let us test that with the calculator you take the first side which is bracket and then bracket actually it's bracket 2 bracket 4 minus 1 squared you see that I'm getting 49 on this side is equal to let's check the other side I have got 4 into 4 squared uh, it's 4 into 4 squared plus 1 and then it's giving me 65 so you see that this is 49 cannot be equal to 65 so you can see that it is not equal therefore you can now tell that 2x minus 1 squared is not equal to that but we need to show that by calculation so let us let me show you how you can properly do that so now how do you work out uh, such a question this is what you need to do as um, a way of working it out what you need to do is to take the question as is which is uh, when they say 2x minus 1 squared that particular squared it means you write it like this it's 2x minus 1 and another bracket 2x minus 1 that is what that that sign uh, 2x minus 1 squared means so whenever you see that squared it means those are two brackets multiplying each other then they are saying this is equal to 4x squared plus 1 that's what they are saying you must prove so but you you don't put an equal sign there you are saying this is equal to then you do what is called expanding and remember to expand this 2x multiplies this bracket and this minus 1 multiplies this bracket so what you have is um, if I can write the equal sign down this is equal to 2x multiplying the other bracket which is 2x minus 1 and then the next one is minus 1 multiplying that bracket again which is 2x minus 1 this is the easier way of doing it and then what you do again you further open the bracket 
the 2x multiplies that and the 2x multiplies that again the minus 1 will multiply similarly so we call it distributing the 2x so we are saying 2x multiplying or bracket 2x to say multiply and then after that the sign for 2 there is a plus so what you do you are going to say plus 2x multiplying minus 1 then you are done on the first part then you are going to the second part it's minus 1 multiplying there and minus 1 multiplying there so what you'll be having is minus 1 multiplying 2x and minus 1 multiplying minus 1 because the sign for minus 1 upon 1 is negative then after that you multiply with the calculator 2 times 2 it's 4x times x is x squared so 2x times 2x is 4x squared now 2x times minus 1 please use a calculator just to confirm you you multiply 2 times negative 1 which is negative 2 and then again the second one is minus 1 times 2 which is again negative 2 and then you've got negative 1 times negative 1 which is a which is a positive 1 okay so what you have is negative 1 times 2x is neg negative 2x negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x and then negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1 so when you have done that you need to further look at what is inside the negative 2x negative 2x these are common terms you can see that um, this and that is common so you need to add it together so what you will be having in this case is um, negative 2 negative 2 so it's minus 2 minus 2 is minus 4 so you'll have 4x squared here it's 4x squared minus 4x that is minus 2 minus 2 and then plus 1 so you see that is what we are having but now if you go back to our statement that we started today saying prove this so what you are having is you are, you are having now this part became 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 they are saying prove that it is equal to 4x squared plus 1 so you can see that the 4x squared is there the plus 1 is there but there is that minus 4 that is not there so you can see that these are not identical or they are not equal so you can therefore say therefore 2x minus 1 squared is not equal to 4x squared plus 1 so that is how you can conclude that is 2 max so that is the simpler way of doing it all right guys so let us move on to the next question uh, this is question 4.1 now we're in the question 4 say so subtract what are we subtracting we are subtracting 4x squared minus 3 from that so when they say from that is what you start with that is number 1 and that is number 2 so you write it minus 2 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 they are saying from this one we must subtract but when you subtract put a bracket always put a bracket and then you have got 4x squared minus 3 if you forget to put a bracket like this what is going to happen is let's say there was no bracket like this so what it means is this negative that you are seeing here is only affecting that negative 4 but it does not affect the 3 that's why it is important for you to put the bracket because the bracket what it does it shows that this negative is affecting that and this negative is affecting that that is the main reason why you are putting the, the uh, bracket so if you continue this is equal to you open now this bracket to say minus 2 multiplies that minus 2 multiplies that and minus 2 multiplies that that is called expanding so it's minus 2 times you're putting a bracket it's 2x squared and minus 2 times negative 3x and minus 2 times 5 
Now this negative bracket 4x squared minus 3, what you can do is there is a hidden one there that you can use. Then you expand pro like the other parts there to say minus 1 times 4x squared and minus 1 times minus 3. I hope you can see what is happening there. So that is what you need to be doing in that case. So this is equal to minus 2 times 4. It's minus 4x squared. Guys, always multiply with your calculators so that you ensure that you don't make errors. Minus 2 times negative 3. It's a positive 6x because a negative times a negative gives me positive. Minus 2 times 5 is negative 10. Minus 1 times 4x squared is negative 4x squared. And then minus 1 times minus 3 is a positive 3. At this stage, I need to simplify. Now, what do I do when I simplify? I collect like terms. So you need to collect like terms. The first one that is common, focus on the squared, with the one with x squared. So you see there is that one and there is that one. So bring it together. It is You are rearranging in this case when you are collecting like terms. So it's minus 4x squared minus 4x squared you see i'm rearranging and then after that you can focus on the x there is the x um that is the only x so you have minus six i mean plus six x see i'm ticking it so that i can see whatever i did um consider there is minus 10 plus 3 so it's minus 10 plus 3 it's always good to ensure that you don't leave out any item there so you use a cal calculator to say minus 4, minus 4, where there is minus 4x squared. These are common. So it's minus 4, minus 4. They need to give you the answer. That is minus 8. But as I say, it's always good to take a calculator. Minus 4, minus 4 is minus 8. But it's x squared, remember? It's not only minus 8, but it's minus 8x squared plus 6x. And then minus 10 plus 3. The bigger number is negative there, which is negative 7. So minus 10 plus 3, it is going to give you negative 7. Now, don't be tempted to add this thing further. There is nothing else you can do. This is minus 8x squared. It is totally different from 6x. It is totally different from minus 7. So don't be tempted where you want to add things to say minus 8x squared plus 6x. Because they have got x, you are saying minus 8 plus 6 is minus 2. That is wrong. Remember the square, the fact that the square is 1 is 2. Here the square is 1 and there is no x. It means these are totally different items and there is nothing further you can do than to leave it like that. At this stage, I would say just leave it like that. You cannot add this further. I hope this um, makes sense to you guys. Now, let us move on to the next question. I'm just working on this uh background the white background i hope it is clear to you guys but uh, i think it's more convenient because there is a bit of space that is created now look at this say simplify i need to simplify this is three max so i've got uh let me make it bigger it's interesting already as is so let me work it from here from the original question it's minus b cubed over 12 multiplying 4b minus 2ab over 6 plus 12 all right so what i can do equal to you can open the bracket take the whole of this you multiply it there you multiply it there you multiply it there so we are distributing it okay so it is minus b cubed over 12 multiplying let me use instead of a bracket i'll say times 4b I think that but no is 4p it's more like 4p over 1 then it's again it is a negative there which is minus b cubed over 12 times the next one there is that negative you see that so you say times negative 2ab over 6 and then we have minus b cubed over 12 multiplied by 
12 this you can say over 1 as I was saying so all these numbers that the 4p there is over 1 there the 12 is like there is over 1 that is hidden there at this stage it becomes easier for you now to simplify remember you are allowed to cancel out across like 4 into 4 1 how many times does 4 go into 12 it's three times are you seeing that so what you have at the bottom you have got three times one which is three times one is a three then at the top you have got minus b cubed times b so let me just write it down minus b cubed times b all right and then the next thing we can do here is you see we've got two negatives here you have a negative and a negative these two negatives they are multiplying each other you can see the multiplication sign so they are multiplying each other and a negative times a negative is equal to a positive so it means here you'll have a plus so it becomes b cubed on top times a b which is that then at the bottom you have six times six which is this times this are you seeing that and then we have minus again if we are cancelling the 12 cancels the 12 to get a 1 so what we'll be having is minus b cubed over 1 which is simple like minus b cubed remember the question was why i made a big error you need to know the question first you, you can't just answer a question without asking yourself what is the question the question is simplify so you need to simplify meaning uh, bring it into simpler terms okay so if you start to multiply the first one b cubed times b it's minus b to the power 4 there are 3 with another one now it's 4 in other ways we are using laws of exponents here so there is a power 1 let me apply the rules properly so there is a power 1 there so it will be 3 plus 1 over 3 plus can you do the same thing b cubed so it is there is a power one there so it's b to the power of three plus one times a over six times six is 36 and then minus b to the power of three if you simplify it will become minus b to the power of four over three plus b to the power of four a over 36 minus b to the power of 3 so this is the simplified form after we've opened those brackets so that is how you can simplify that so it was 3 marks let us move on to the next one where we are also supposed to simplify that is 4 point um 4.2.2 the question is the same it still says we need to simplify so whenever you're simplifying in this scenario here in this case this particular two is affecting that because of of this negative sign these are divided into two separate parts so you've got two separate things so in those two separate things they are both affected by 2x so you've got that 4x cubed affected and you've got this one affected so when you write it down you will have 4x cubed over 2x cubed I think that so each item is affected now that one is easier now you need to I to accept the fact that this is taken as one thing because it's 2 times x times 3x squared so it's one thing it's one entity so you say minus 2x 3x squared over 2x cubed it's one thing uh, you can treat it as one thing and then if you say equal to how many marks was this just to be uh, just to check this is also three marks so if you say equal to what you have is the two will cancel the two, two I mean two into four to give us a two the x cubed cancels the x cubed to give a one so you left with the two minus now you need to be sensitive here how you cancel out so the two symbol cancels the two which is fine now if you look at the x we have got 
three axes at the bottom so let me just write like this this whole thing here is similar to this it's like you've got two times x times three times x squared is x times x you seeing that over at the bottom you've got two times x times x times x that is x cubed so you're cancelling the two you cancel the first x with another x and then you cancel the other x and you cancel the other x do you see that everything cancelled at the bottom so when it cancels you get a one you don't get nothing you get a one and then at the top what is remaining is that three so the answer there is three but how can you see that directly from here you cancel for example you ask yourself that is x to the power one when you cancel it you come here where there were three they are now two because three minus one is two then after that you take this x2 cancel the other x2 you can see three remaining so it's two minus three with a calculator what is two minus three is minus one so that is how you can simplify this kind of an example guys it is not really complicated but you need to be very careful this is an i'll say nb they like this question they like this question so take note of how this is simplified be ready for it in the final exam something similar so that you're not taken by surprise all right now we are supposed to factorize fully how many marks is two marks so it's not much look at this question it says we need to factorize so what we have is x a plus y minus y plus a this one only need you to analyze it carefully that's why it's two marks look at this in the brackets i've got a i've got a so here a is positive a is positive and then i've got plus y and i've got y here is positive so whatever is inside the brackets is the same so i can rearrange it and say this is equal to x a plus y minus start with a plus y because the aim is to make the brackets the same look at it now a plus y a plus y so you continue to write what is in the brackets which is a plus y and then you write what is outside the brackets which is that and that so if i write it it will be x minus now look at this it looks like there is nothing I, I need i can write it's just x minus but remember there is a hidden one there that's where they're trying to trick you up there so it's x minus one then you close the bracket that is what is hidden in there all right so with that they give you two marks i think this was a bonus for you if ever you're doing that now let us move on to the next part of these algebra questions as i say my aim is to try to solve as much of them much of these as possible there is the first one is four marks which is uh quite a number of marks uh, the first one is 4 marks, 4.1.1. Let's look at this. It says solve. What are we doing? Solve the following equations. Now, these are equations. Now, for us to be able to solve the equations, the first one is this 2 is multiplying. That bracket means the 2 is affecting that and the 2 is affecting that. So, 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 2 is 4. That's the first part. Now, again you see there is just a negative there and you need to open the bracket with a negative so another hint whenever you see a negative and it's going inside the bracket you just interchange the signs so you just make it like this minus x because x was positive now three is negative you say plus three you just interchange it that's how you distribute a negative inside i repeat again if you want to distribute a negative inside for example if i've got minus I've got 5 minus 7x plus 2y minus 6, I mean minus 7z minus 3m. So if I say open this bracket, I mean distribute that negative, you just interchange. The 5 was positive, become negative 5. The 7 was negative, become positive 7. Now 2y becomes negative 2y, negative 7z become positive 7z negative 3m become positive 3m do you see what i'm saying you just interchange if you don't want to do that remember there is a hidden one there so it's minus 1 times x which is minus 1x which is same as negative x minus 1 times minus 3 if i take a calculator and say minus 1 
times minus 3 you see I'm getting a positive 3 which is the same as what I got so it doesn't matter whether you use uh, this this hint of distributing a negative or you just interchange the signs it's up to you it will still be the same thing so uh, that is up to you but what I used here I just interchanged this goes there and this goes there so this then becomes equal to this is equal to 5 now equations means we must solve for x we must have x on one side so collect like terms these are same 2x minus x is equal to take all the numbers to jump the equal sign so 4 was positive when it jumps this equal sign it becomes negative so it would be 5 which is already on the other side minus 4 look at 3 again 3 was positive when it jumps the equal sign it becomes negative so it's minus 3 so what is 2x minus x what it means is there is a hidden one there 2 minus 1 it's 1x or x is equal to 5 minus 4 minus 3 use a calculator there 5 minus 4 minus 3 which is negative uh, 2 in this case so you've got minus 2 therefore x is equal to negative 2 so that's the answer but on this one be quick you need to test your answer always remember you need to test test what do you do when you're testing you take the value of x you said x was negative 2 and then you said x was negative 2 so you take a calculator where there is x you put a negative 2 we need to get a 5 so it's 2 bracket negative 2 plus 2 minus bracket negative 2 negative 3 see that if I say equal to I'm getting a 5 it means my left hand side is 5 my right hand side is 5 which is the correct thing because the left hand side has to balance the right hand side guys let's look at 4.4.2 again these um, fractions it's a very important interesting one but now whenever you're analyzing fractions and you are supposed to work with fractions you need to know the addition and separation of fractions so the first one is x plus 1 and 1 minus x let's look at the marker location so that we know this is a lot of marks guys this is five marks it means you need to do some heavy lifting a bit you know so look at these five marks so here I have the uh, the denominator x minus 1 I mean x plus 1 x minus 1 so let me first deal with that if I'm to add do you know how to add this do you know how to add 2x over x plus 1 plus 2x over 1 minus x do you know how to just add this because that's what they're trying to test you there if ever you know how to add that if you don't know let me help you how do you add that the first things first is to realize that x minus 1 x plus 1 and 1 minus x you see here you started with an x here you started with a 1 so what if you want to start with an x on the other side so if you want to start with an x here it would be 2x over x plus 1 plus 2x over minus x plus 1 you see that but now there is something interesting with minus x plus 1 if I want to take out a negative here it will be 2x over x plus 1 I'll show you why I'm doing it I'm using my experience here but you will see later why I'm doing that plus 2x over I'm going to take out a negative remember the part where I said a negative when you are distributing it inside you interchange the signs even if you are taking it out you are interchanging the signs x is negative x becomes positive one is positive one becomes negative do you see that I have interchanged the signs now this part this particular negative at the bottom it will affect that positive for example let me show you something if I say uh, a fraction like this I say 1 on top over negative 1 even if the negative is at the bottom the whole thing becomes negative you see it's negative 1 so even here it will become 2x over x plus 1 now it's minus from plus it becomes minus 2x over 
x minus 1. Do you see what I've done? I'm going to leave it like this for now. So that, as I told you, there is a reason why I'm doing that. That is one side, and we are supposed to add the side. But before we add the side, let us focus on this. How do you simplify this? If you want to simplify this, you will see that this is a difference of two squares, which is 1 over x squared minus 1 squared, which is equal to 1 over... Now, remember the difference of two squares? It's more like you erase this square here. If you remove that square and you remove that square, what are you saying? You're seeing x minus 1, right? So that's the first part. You write that in the bracket, x minus 1. So I've got x minus 1 and the other bracket becomes x plus 1. You need to do difference of two squares if you want to remember. Now look at what I have here and look at what I have here in the, in the, in the, in the part that I just factorized. Look at the bottom, the denominators, x minus 1, x plus 1. Here in the fractions, x plus 1, x minus 1. Do you see that they gave you something that is actually related? But if you didn't see it here, at this stage as 1 minus x, you are not going to be able to match it unless you do what we did here, whereby take out a negative. If you didn't take out a negative, it was not going to be the same. So now we continue here. I'm going to add this fraction, but remember, we've got this other side. So if I'm adding this fraction, what is common is x plus 1 and x minus 1. This is the common denominator. Now x plus 1 into x plus 1, x minus 1, is like I'm cancelling that. x minus 1 will remain, but it will multiply that top, which is 2x. So it will be 2x. What remains is x minus 1, and then I've got that negative sign. Again x minus 1, x minus 1, x plus 1 will remain multiplying by the top. Are you seeing that? So it's, uh, in this case, it's minus 2x, and then it's x plus 1. I was supposed to remove that cancel, because I mustn't cancel it. So it's, I was just doing it for you. It's minus 2x, it's x plus 1. So when I've done that, I'm able now at this stage to simplify, open the bracket, to say 2x times x is 2x squared. And then 2x times minus 1 is minus 2x. Minus 2x times x is minus 2x squared. Minus 2x times 1 is minus 2x. And then at the bottom is over x plus 1 and x minus 1. Are you seeing that? Now, let's group them together, collect like terms, that one and that one, which is 2x squared minus 2x squared, because they have got the square, so you collect them, and then the other one is that one and that one, which is minus 2x, minus 2x. Don't forget your bottom, which is your denominator. Don't forget that. Always go with it continuously, x plus 1 and x minus 1, so don't lose your denominator in this case. You'll see when I'm pull it, pulling it all together what it will become. So at the end of the day, 2, two, two minus 2, this cancels to give us a 0. But minus 2x minus 2x, it gives me minus 4x, because minus 2 minus 2 is minus 4, over x plus 1 and x minus 1. So that is what this whole left hand side gave me. I can come here to say this left hand side this one it's simplified to that and now having done that which means now I can consolidate everything so I can take that now to say minus 4x over x plus 1 x minus 1 is equal to this one which was 1 over x squared minus 1 which became this part which means is equal to 1 over x minus 1 and x plus 1 now look at our denominators do you see something interesting about them they are the same you are allowed to actually cancel them like that so at the end of the day you've got minus 4 
x is equal to 1. We are allowed. Then you divide by what? Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. So what is x? x is equal to negative 1 over 4. Do you see how you can do that? Or if you wanted to do a little bit of a longer method, let me write it again. Minus 4x over x plus 1. x minus 1 is equal to 1 over x minus 1 and x plus 1. Another method is what they call cross multiplying. So what, what you do is this top multiplies the bottom and the bottom multiplies the top. This is what they mean. So we call this cross multiplication. So what you'll have here is you will have minus 4x multiplying this part which is x minus 1 x plus 1 is equal to 1 multiplying this side which is x plus 1 and x minus 1 so now be careful now not to start opening brackets and everything you can see x plus 1 x minus 1 so you can divide by x minus 1 here x plus 1 because you can see that they will cancel x minus 1 and x plus 1 so don't open the brackets there is x minus 1 x plus 1 there x plus 1 x plus 1 x minus 1 x minus 1 you see that 1 will remain hence minus 4x will give us a 1 and it will take us back to that answer that is x is equal to negative 1 over 4 but remember when it's an equation you need to test it so since you know that x is equal to negative 1 over 4 negative 1 over 4 negative 1 over 4 negative 1 over 4 even here it's negative 1 over 4 now let us simplify and see if the left hand side will balance with the right hand side let's start with the left hand side it's 2 bracket negative 1 over 4 please put brackets so that it becomes uh, easier that you don't make an error actually it's a fraction 2 bracket negative 1 over 4 like that over uh, negative you can put it in brackets also here saying negative uh, 1 over 4 plus 1 are you seeing that and then I've got plus again 2 bracket negative 1 over 4 like that over 1 minus bracket negative 1 over 4 you need to be very sensitive how you input that I'll show you another easier way that I usually do so when you've done that equal to I'm getting minus 16 over 15 here is minus 16 over 15 I must get the same answer on my right hand side if ever I did the right simplification so let's do that on the right hand side it's 1 over x squared which is negative 1 over 4 squared minus 1 equal to minus 16 over 15 it was 15 here so it's also minus 16 over 15 so you see left hand side equal to right hand side means my answer of negative 1 over 4 is correct so sometimes what I do when I'm when I'm testing this answer quicker this is what I do since I know that my x is equal to negative 1 over 4 so I'll take my calculator and store that okay I just say like this um, negative 1 over 4 equal to then I press an equal sign so if I say answer equal to it gives me the last answer so if I say answer equal to I always get the last answer so what I do is I do the fraction and then I say two answer over answer plus one to avoid punching negative negative plus bracket two answer over one minus answer you don't have to say negative negative you no know, just just put the answer like that if you say equal to you see I'm still getting that same thing when you go to the next one again you need to re-enter that negative one over four remember don't use the previous answer otherwise it will be wrong after that test it answer okay then you've got the right hand side 1 over answer squared 
minus 1. Do you see how fast it can be? So guys, that's how we do that. Last one and uh, final one for today is how many marks? 2 marks. Actually, it's not the last one. We've got the weight problem. 4.5.3 now. 10x is equal to 0, 0,0001. Now you need to solve for x. So you're going to say 10 to the power of x here. They never say don't use a calculator. So we can use a calculator here. 10 to the power of x. Now you enter this 0, 0, there are three zeros, 1, 2, 3, and then 1 equal to. So now SD, you see, calculator gives you 1 times 10 to the power um, negative 4. So it's 1 times 10 to the power negative 4. So in actual fact, even here, this 1 times 10 to the power negative 4 is the same as saying, just want to show you, if I just write 10 to the power negative 4, look what the calculator will give me, and then press SD, so 1 times 10 power negative 4. So you can simply say 10 to the power of x is equal to 10 to the power negative 4. So the same basis, use that concept which says if you're having a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, if the bases are the same, then you equate the exponents. Therefore, m is equal to n. So even here, therefore, if 10 is equal to 10, then x is equal to minus 4. So if you put minus 4 there, it will give you 0, 0,001. That is that. But let's test it. How do you test that? If you say 10 to the power negative 4 equal to, now if you need to put it in the, that notation they gave, use shift 6 and then you say 9, press SD, you can see 0, 0,0001. Don't worry with the zeros after, but you can see that other answer there. Last one, last one, last one uh, to end this up. It's, it's 5 marks. Oh, it's quite a number of marks. It says the sum of three consecutive even numbers is 78. Determine the three numbers. A very common question, guys. A very, very common question. Now, let me create a, a page here out of this. So, with this page here, I just want to work it properly for you without hurrying so that you can see how it's like. Say the sum of three consecutive. The word sum means plus. The word consecutive means following each other like that but even means divided by two then they're saying 78 determine the numbers how do you approach that so consecutive even numbers so let me just have an example let's say we have a number line one two three four five six seven eight nine ten now let's talk about this word consecutive Conse let me look at the spelling consecutive it's s consecutive this word consecutive means following each other it's following each other so if i say consecutive here the consecutive um uh not in a, the consecutive numbers in a number line so it means from one you go to two from two i mean from 2 you go to 3 from 3 you go to 4 so that is to be consecutive you see that's what it means it means you say 1 plus 1 is 2 2 plus 1 is 3 3 plus 1 so you are adding plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 that is what it means as consecutive that's the first part the second part though they put a, a, a certain property in this statement they say consecutive even numbers and you know what is even even numbers are those numbers that are divided by two so one is not an even number but there is the first consecutive number it's two from two the next consecutive number is four from four the next consecutive number is six from six the next consecutive number is eight from eight it doesn't matter where you take it from you can take it from six from six to eight you jump seven so consecutive you cannot move from six to ten that's not consecutive consecutive means move from six go to seven is it an even number no go to the next number eight is it an even number yes so you stop there do the next thing move from eight 
is 9 a consecutive number? No. From 9, what's the next number? Is 10. But you will see that you are having plus 2, plus 2, 4 plus 2, it's 6, 6 plus 2, it's 8, 8 plus 2 is 10. So that is what are even consecutive numbers. Sometimes this question will say the sum of um, three consecutive odd numbers. Now, odd numbers are numbers that cannot be divided by two or that cannot be divided by two without leaving a remainder. Like one is a consecutive number. From there, I add two to get three. Three plus two, I get five. Five plus two, I get seven. You see, also these are the other sets of consecutive odd numbers. So it depends how the question wants you to deal with this question though is interested in consecutive even numbers so what we do we will say for consecutive even numbers let the first number be equal to x so I want to show you also I can start from anywhere I will say 72 I mean 7 71 or 70 71 72 73 74 now look at this word consecutive again it still meet the same criteria from 70 the next consecutive number is 72 plus 2 from 72 74 plus 2 so you always add plus 2 whatever the case so if we say let the first number be x so i will say i will have x here what do you expect i will go from here to say plus 2 so the next one will be x plus 2 because I must add plus 2 there I do again I say plus 2 the next one will be x from this number it's x plus 2 plus 2 so now how many numbers are there this is the first number we have said let the first number be x so this is our second number and this is our third number and the statement says the sum of 3 consecutive even numbers is 78 so those are the three numbers we don't know them that's why we call them x so if i if i use the word sum sum means add them so we need to come here and say x plus this x plus that so it will be in this case x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 2 plus 2 now if i add that collect like terms x plus x plus x is 3x 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. Now they say this sum, go back to the statement, they're saying when you add these numbers, that sum, it gives you 78. So then you're going to say this is equal to 78 and this is equal to 78. Then you have to solve for x. Now how do you solve for x? Take 6 to join 7, but remember it jumps the equal sign. It was positive, it will become negative. So 3x is equal to 78 minus 6 now you solve it 3x is equal to what is 78 minus 6 is 72 now 3 and x are multiplying the opposite of multiplication is dividing dividing you need to liberate x so you have to divide by 3 to make sure that x is free so divide by 3 x is equal to 72 divided by 3 I think it is um, 24 something like that but let's check 72 divided by 3 is 24 so the first number what did we say we said let the first number be x which means uh, the first number is 24 what is the second number is 24 x plus 2 24 plus 2 is 26 and the third number is 28 so these are the three numbers the question was determine the three numbers and you saw the three numbers here it's 24 26 28 so if I write them down here to say it's 24 26 and 28 you saw the working let us test by adding these numbers the sum of three consecutive numbers so it's 24 plus 26 plus 28 it must give us 78 and that is what they said is so guys I hope this was making sense to you and next time be able to solve this whenever they give you such a question. Now if you have not subscribed to this channel and if this is your first time seeing this channel it means you have not subscribed. Now 
I will encourage you to subscribe so that you can get all the notifications every time we post some new videos. There will be a lot of new videos I will be posting as you are revising for your grade 9. So I will encourage you to ensure you subscribe. Not only that, there is a notification bell that I want you to press so that YouTube can send you a notification to say there is a new video uploaded by the 24 minutes. Again, if this video is above 24 minutes, don't stay and watch it for more than 24 minutes. Remember, your mind can only absorb up to 24 minutes. Just watch it for the first 24 minutes. Give yourself a short break. Do something different. Come back to it for the next 24 minutes again. If if there is more than 24 minutes in it, in pockets of 24, let's say the video is one hour, which means you can watch it up to maybe three times. 24, 24, and 24. So it helps you to absorb and understand everything that you're taught. Guys, this is the 24-minute lesson. And remember... I am focusing on the underdogs. Those who are saying I'm struggling and I'm battling with my mathematics, please help me. If you're already good, listen guys, my methods are very, very slow. So you'll, be get, you'll get frustrated actually. I'm focusing on someone who says I'm struggling with my maths, but just give me easier ways of approaching it. But at the end of the day, I will pass my paper with good marks that will make me smile. I am looking for such. And if this is beneficial to you, Share it with your friends who are also facing similar situations and you will never regret. If you have got questions, send some questions below after um, in the video. Just send some questions or some uh, math that you've got a problem with, you can't solve it. Just leave a comment and we might assist you also. And also if you want some more resources, just look at the end of this video. There is a website 24minute.co.za and you can get more resources there. Thank you.